favourite model? Um, probably Freya Ben Erickson. Take more. Do you have Instagram and how much are you on it? Yes, I have it. I don't upload loads of pictures, but I like stalk and go through people's profiles about yeah. three hours a day. Yeah. Uh, I do, but not very much. No, okay. not, not not massively. Do you follow blogs, or are you a key magazine reader? I'm a key magazine reader, but I only read certain magazines. If that makes sense. Okay. So I get the same I get the same magazines every month, but never. I'm not really blog. Uh, I follow blogs. Yeah. I have a Tumblr. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, I don't really, don't really use magazines. What are your thoughts on like, models becoming big food as well, being scouted on there? Like, do you yeah. think what's more important these days? Is it the social following or is it still about genuine talent? Um, I think it's a bit of both really because I think there's some models that you can see and they look amazing, but I think it's a lot more... I find them a lot more charismatic if you can see like Instagram videos of them or you can see them like messing around and like I think if they they're public on their Instagram you get you like them more because they seem a little bit more normal if, unless you just see like like Arnie Rubik like massive supermodels then they're not really yeah it's not really relative so yeah I quite like that they're on Instagram okay. Obviously working on the PR team, especially um, in your position, you must have noticed the shift in how social media is used in the modelling and fashion industry. Yeah, I would say there's been a big shift. I mean, when I started about four years ago, Instagram was just beginning. It was definitely something people had a look at, um, but it was never an important part of booking a model or a talent. I would say now that for the clients it's really quite important for them to check who's representing their brand and where it's going to be seen. It's definitely important as an agency to make sure that we're using social media and that we're on Instagram and it's important for the people that we're looking after that they are present on social media but they're also present in a correct way and they're representing themselves well. You have to be quite careful of what is put mm. out there because it's viewed by everybody. I had dinner a few months ago with um, one of the girls that we look after um, and she is a great model. She's done great editorials, great campaigns and she definitely felt frustrated because since she's been modelling in the past five, six years, the whole industry has changed and when she started it was a case of, you know, you worked really hard, you worked out, you looked after yourself, you had good pictures in your book and you hoped to work with the right clients. And now she finds the first question she's asked when she appears at a casting is not where's your book, who have you shot with, is how many Instagram followers do you have? I think it's an interesting time for social media because I don't think it's going to go away. I think there's a lot more growth to be seen. I'm not entirely sure in what direction, but there's definitely opportunities for people to become famous or to be the front of brand campaigns, to be in magazines now that they didn't have before because of social media. So maybe it's a chance to see people we wouldn't normally be seeing. Um, What do you think about models being scouted from from places like Instagram? Um, so, like, is it now? Do you think it's now about the social following, or is it actually about the talent? The talent. Because I think they kind of think, well, they've got loads and loads of followers, but they're going to get seen more. Yeah. Because um, there was that, there was like a whole program on it with like the plus size models, and like it was all about their followers. Because yeah, they're just the ones in the limelight. Yeah. yeah. But then it's that like actual talent, then it's not because it's how many followers you've got. It's not from you've learned your like skill and trade. Yeah. You haven't to say as well. You have to think about modelling is is the public eye, and if they've got a massive public following, then they're going to sell.
that is part of her own channel, which yeah. is my <laughs> Vlogger, YouTuber, he's been vlogging for a little while, so we're gonna just talk to her, give her a couple questions to answer, mm -hmm. and just share her opinions for Juice Box today. So, how are you doing on this very rainy Thursday morning? Feeling afternoon, actually. Very British, very as British. usual. Complaining about the weather, how British Indeed. of me. <laughs> okay, first question. How long have you been vlogging, vlogging for? Three, four years. Well, a probably officially two years, I would say. Which is still quite a long time. Yeah. So you're still a little bit of a baby in, yeah. the, in, the, little, in the game. Um, would you say this has changed dramatically over your time and why? Yes. Um, when I first started vlogging and YouTubing was just like, it was fun. It was like, let's say I wore a cute outfit today. Let yeah. me bring out my camera real yeah. quick. My rubbish quality, yeah. my rubbish Mac or whatever I had lying around. Literally. Let me film my outfit and let me upload it. Now it's like, okay, I need to schedule a post. I have to make sure I have a caption written. Back in the day, I just uploaded and here yeah. you go. Enjoy the content. <laughs> Literally. What are your thoughts on bloggers and journalists almost in competition with each other? Um, if there is any competition. I just don't think there's really a competition. I'll always be on the side of the bloggers because I feel like they're less biased, they've got their own opinion, yeah. and it's more reliable. Um, I love journalism, well I used to, but it's just, I don't know, I don't trust journalists. I just don't. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> Do you feel blogging has become too commercialised? Just a bit. Like, nowadays it's like, you get advertisements here for teachers and that. Now you get advertisements for bloggers as well. Yeah. Like, we're looking for a blogger. Like, you apply for job roles and it's like, oh, have you had blogging experience and stuff? Yeah. Whereas before it was like, everyone's dirty little secret, like something you don't want to talk yeah. about. Like, something you had you your had blog, yeah, you, you were hiding cover. it, like, you were like, oh, I watch this YouTuber, but no one needs to know kind yeah, of thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But now it's like, oh yeah, blogging this, blogging that, everyone knows about it. What do you think of brands' perception of bloggers? Do you feel that you're almost a scapegoat for them and that they just want to kind of draw out as much money from that they can from you? Or do you think some brands genuinely want to work with bloggers and actually want to have a relationship with them? Instead? I feel like brands like ASOS, for example, they genuinely want to have a relationship with the bloggers and just like, just be kind of like a big sister yeah. figure in their life. Whereas there's certain brands that I've noticed is just very much like, we'll just use you because we need you for this campaign. Yeah. Oh, we realize you're really good at sportswear. So we'll just throw you in there. Oh, you're really good at makeup. Oh, we'll send you a few bits. Mm. Make sure you tweet about it, make sure you vlog yeah. about it and stuff. And like, I've worked at PR companies and I've seen it firsthand. Like, they'll be like to me, oh, make sure you get this blogger because I heard she does this and she's going to make us a lot of money. So yeah. it's just like, well, I don't know, and we all fall for it. That's yeah. the thing as YouTubers. Like, if a PR company emailed me today and was like, oh, girl, I see you wear weave. Okay, yeah. we'll send you some free weave. Mm -hmm. And you know, I would be like, yeah. okay, I'll do it. I wouldn't yeah. even think twice about it. We're just like, we're kind of naive in a way. Yeah. yeah. Do you feel bloggers who have been blogging for a long time get as much credit as maybe bloggers have been blogging for a shorter amount of time or maybe the same length of time and just don't get as much recognition because they're not really as out there as maybe as someone else. I know people who have blogged for like years and years and by now I feel like they should have book deals and stuff like I don't know all that elaborate stuff that these big YouTubers yeah. have but then it's like they don't have it because they don't have that following on social media like I've started to realize that you can have like 2,000 followers on Instagram and then like your blog can be a pile of poo but people will still want, like look at your in look, yeah. look at your blog yeah like, I've realized a lot of people that are like let's say social media famous like let's say they've got loads of subscribers like, yeah. like those are Twitter followers those are Instagram followers they then start blogs which is yeah. kind of one of my pet peeves yeah they start blogs like and then it's like and then they generate like content and stuff which is rubbish and then PR companies are into them yeah and then they just turn a blind eye on the people that yeah. actually work hard and it's their yeah. actual passion. Yeah. And I've realised it's always the people that it's their passion that get looked down upon. Yeah. Is it becoming easier to become a blogger because of its perks? Do you feel like people see other bloggers and think they get free stuff, they go to events, yeah, yeah. they have such a fab time and they don't actually generally want to do it anymore? Like, yeah, people get a lot, like, a, not a bad perception, but people just assume that 
most vloggers like they get freebies straight away it's quite easy yeah. but it does take a lot of hard work so that's why i feel like there's a lot of vlogs nowadays that have just popped up out of nowhere yeah. like people just think oh i'm gonna get this out of this like asos are gonna start talking to me straight away but they don't know it's like there's a criteria yeah it's kind of hard to like get to that level and even to get like small companies like let's say aliexpress to send yeah. you kind of things you there's like a criteria for it so well, a like, lot of people she inside and she like, inside like wrongly. little stuff like that like there's actually a criteria for it but people just think oh it's so easy i'm gonna get the perks yeah. out of this like within a month do you think there's a misconception with bloggers because of social media and what there they definitely out? is like a lot of bloggers are like put out pictures of them like always out let's say at parties yeah. and events and stuff and then i go to these events and i see these people and i'm like but you were sitting on the couch the whole time yeah you wasn't like partying it up like yeah. you were saying like you were like they'll tweet the next day i had such a bad time i was dancing the whole night away and you're like but then people see that like let's say like younger girls yeah like they'll be 13 14 they see that and they think oh my gosh i wish my life was like that it's definitely and then they just construed a lot like it's a lot it's like it's not really how it is though yeah. like do you think there's a misconception with bloggers because of social media and what there they definitely is like a lot of bloggers are like put out pictures of them like always out let's say at parties yeah. and events and stuff and then i go to these events and i see these people and i'm like but you were sitting on the couch the whole time yeah you wasn't like partying it up like yeah. you were saying like you were like they'll tweet the next day i had such a bad time i was dancing the whole night away and you're like but then people see that like let's say like younger girls yeah like they'll be 13 14 they see that and they think oh my gosh i wish my life was like that it's definitely and then they just construed a lot like it's a lot it's like it's not really how it is though yeah. like kind of going back to what you said before with journalists and bloggers how do you think journalists react towards bloggers as it has kind of got more popular in maybe like the last say what yeah. 10 years i feel like journalists just feel threatened that their jobs are just gonna go away nowadays yeah. because there's not really any standards nowadays to being a journalist it's more like can you do this can you write an article can you yeah. blog so i feel like journalists just pretty much feel like under pressure as well and that's why a lot of the time you realize that there's a lot of like um news channels or news stations or whatever fashion journalists or like vogue for example now they hire bloggers to work for them or work with them on stuff and it's just like i don't know it gives us like a chance it gives us an opportunity it's not just so much like you did a degree for three years and you're a journalist now it's like yeah. oh what about someone who started from the bottom like just like writing in their bedroom yeah